Hey guys, I have here the 12 volt 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Sun Fun Kits that I built and assembled approximately two weeks ago and published a video on. In today's video, I just wanted to go over uh, some of the questions that were asked, a few additional points of information that were left out of the first video. Uh, additionally, this is a DIY kit. There are many different ways you can assemble this, especially depending on which parts you purchase. Um, so I'm going to take parts of this apart and I'm going to assemble it a bit differently and kind of put my spin on it and make it my own DIY battery. So one of the first things I wanted to mention is that the BMS in here is pre-programmed for a maximum of 60 amps charge. And I was wondering why that is, because most JBD BMSs I've seen on the market, you can charge and discharge at the same rate. Apparently the one they're using has a hard maximum of 80 amps charge. Additionally, one of the most frequently asked questions was, does the BMS have a low temperature cutoff to prevent charging below freezing? Yes, it does. I didn't go over that specifically in the first video, and I probably should have. So on the right hand side of the BMS here, you can see this black lead that's coming off. And this is a temperature probe just to affix wherever you want it. The manufacturer does recommend placing it on the bottom of this uh, BMS mounting board. You could also place it right against the cell or against the terminal or a bus bar. But this is pre-programmed to prevent charging below zero degrees Celsius. And that is a configurable parameter that you can set as desired. All right, so you'll see here I have all the bus bars removed, all the components, and the BMS. So my goal with this reconfiguration here is going to be avoid using the spacer. That way I'm assembling just the V1 kit and I'm going to make the assumption that a BMS was not purchased and uh, make my own BMS and my own cables to and from the BMS and to and from the terminals. I would really like to use these M6 screws they provided. These are very, very nice screws compared to the studs in my opinion. Uh, the only reason I didn't use these the first time around was because once I put two ring terminals on these screws in addition to the bus bar, um, I just didn't feel like there was enough screw left to go into the cell. All right, so I took those three bus bars and you'll see I drilled a small hole through them. Uh, and then I just ran an M3 sized uh, tap through the hole. So I now have a bus bar that I can thread an M3 sized screw into to attach my balance leads. That way my balance leads are no longer on the same terminals that are holding down this bus bar, but a separate terminal by themselves. So now I can set these bus bars into place. All right, so now I can use these screws uh, without having to worry about the extra height of the studs and without having to worry about the height of the ring terminals underneath of the screw because now I've got this small threaded hole drilled off to the side where I can thread a screw through for my balance leads and also uh, so I can put this screw straight through without having to worry about hitting this plastic plate I just need to be cautious and make sure I use a screw that's small enough such that it does not go into the cell and uh, unfortunately I don't have a torque wrench that has this size Allen screw on the end of it um, but I did tighten these down and they are fairly tight like it I'm doing it by hand and it is fairly tight and it does not feel whatsoever like it's going to strip out so I really do like these screws they provide for this purpose alright so I have the BMS tray here and I removed the BMS because uh, the BMS is an add-on component the base kit does not come with a BMS but it does include the BMS tray so I'm going to use this 12 volt JBD BMS from current connected it's a very similar JBD BMS it's built a little bit differently um, it's the same physical dimensions, the terminals are in the same place, but this one is designed for and capable of 150 amps charge and 150 amps discharge. And because this tray was designed for a JBD, it should fit in place, I think. There it goes. Now this BMS and Current Connected comes with a Bluetooth module, the same module as the Sun Fun Kits BMS. And this one actually comes with two separate temperature sensors. So you can put one temperature sensor on the cell, uh, one on the case, or you can put both on the cells, or one on a bus bar, and then it also comes with its own balancing lead. All right, so unfortunately the ring terminals that come with the current connected BMS, they're way too big for this M3 size screw. They are some nice ring terminals, so it's kind of painful to do this, but I'm just going to cut them off. All right, so on the three white wires, you can see I soldered on a very small uh, ring terminal. Didn't do anything with the red and the black yet, I'll explain that shortly. Now I've got these M3 screws, these are 6mm in length, and I also have a 3mm split lock washer. And you can see how easy it is to screw that right down into the bus bar. And that's really a very nice look. So this will work nicely, I think. Alright, so for this main positive connection here that needs to go from this post up into the terminal on the lid. So I purchased this uh, roll of 6 gauge silicone wire. Now the wiring they used from the BMS to the battery is a pair of 6 gauge as well. Uh, so I'm going to plan to use a double up pair of this from the positive post and from the negative post as well. 
Uh, so that looks like a pretty nice length there. So I'm just going to cut it. That's maybe, I don't know, seven or eight inches worth. All right, so now I have a log sized for one gauge cable with a 5 16 inch ring opening. Probably would have been better to have a quarter inch ring opening, but I didn't want to purchase two different size lugs, and the 5 16 does seem like it would be adequate as well. So I've got my pair of silicone insulated wire. You can see I got one end stripped off here. All right, so the pair of number six fit in this lug perfectly. And then I also added in the main positive or the red wire from the BMS connector. Uh, since we don't have a bus bar to bolt down the main positive and the main negative wires for the BMS, um, the same way we drilled out the series connection wires, I'm just going to crimp them down into the ring terminals as well as I go through and do that. Uh, so now I've got my new crimping tool here. I've got the die set for number one size lug. All right, and there we go. I did end up having to set the tool on the number two size setting. You can see there's a two stamped on it there. Put a screwdriver through and I was pulling on it and I cannot pull it off at all. So I know this is a good crimped connection. So now for some added safety and to keep this bundled together nicely. I just picked up some of this one half inch wire sleeving off of Amazon. So just slide these wires through the sleeving. Again, just for some added protection and added safety here. All right, and here's the final product on that. Love the way this stuff turned out. Probably would have looked a little bit nicer if I put some heat shrink over the ends instead of just zip tying it like that. But uh, all right, so you can see the main lead installed here. And again, uh, I'm being very careful because this terminal is exposed and if it contacts any of these bus bars or points, it will short out. So this does make me nervous, but I am being extremely careful here. Next, I'm going to set down my BMS board here. I just want to measure out my silicone wire the same way here. It really doesn't need to be much longer than the original stock wire, but the same principle applies. I'm going to be cutting two pieces and putting them in the same lug. All right, and here's the cable for the BMS to the negative. I've got two number sixes in the same size lug. And on the other end, I have two number six quarter inch lugs. I will note that anywhere there's a battery connection, I did use the tin plated lugs. And I just used bare copper lugs for the BMS connection, simply because the battery connection is an aluminum post and I didn't want to have a copper lug directly on an aluminum post. So this is a copper lug, it is just tinned. All right, so now I'm ready to set down my current connected BMS here. And I can screw that into place. You can see it fits nicely without the yellow spacer because I'm no longer using the studs and there's plenty of clearance uh, below this BMS between the BMS and the battery posts. All right, so here you can see the wires are routed. Uh, there are still, you know, some sharper bends here, but they're not as bad as they were. And the silicone wire is significantly more uh, bendable, more flexible because it doesn't have as tough insulation. Just going to leave the balance lead disconnected for the time being until I finish up the negative side. All right, and here's the cable I made for the negative uh, from the BMS to the terminal. And that will connect to the BMS like so. You can see one is a little bit longer. That's intentional. That way I can wrap it around it like this. Uh, so these are the original bolts that came with the kit. And uh, product support had recommended a specific tool for installing these that really just looked like a standard ratchet. But it had this Allen hex uh, head on the top for this specific bolt. I don't have that tool, I don't really like that tool, and I don't really like this bolt. And these are just standard M8 bolts, and you can see the threads actually go the whole way through to the other side. Uh, so I have these M8 bolts I'm going to use for this purpose. You can see they're significantly shorter. So I'll have one bolt to secure the terminals on the inside, and then I'll put a separate bolt to secure the terminals on the outside. Now I actually repurposed these bolts. These were from that uh, battery I had completely ruined a few months back, and... Uh, the bolts are still good and the bolts fit this enclosure nicely, they're standard M8s. And you can see how much easier this is with the silicone wire, both because it's longer and because of how flexible it is. Alright guys, so I tried and tried with this and I just could not get this lid to stay on without the spacer piece installed, so I did have to put the spacer piece back. I even tried making another cable, I made one quite a bit longer and uh, thinking I could route the wire around and there just is not enough space in here. I ended up making a new cable for the negative lead. I made it a little bit longer, that way it can kind of curl around without too much tension being put on it. So basically the positive comes up in a C form like this, and the negative comes up in an opposing C form, and they kind of fold down like an accordion when it's closed. Um, one thing I was careful on though is making sure like none of these wires are rubbing through any bolts, making sure this is not going to rub through or touch the positive down here. So everything is uh, insulated and has the sheathing on for added protection. And it is worth noting too that the manufacturer did let me know they're working on a new version of this kit 
with a custom design lid that does not require the spacer piece to be used. Uh, so there will be more room in there to route wires around or use different kind of cells that have studs versus uh, drilled terminals and things like that. And again, the intent of this is to be a DIY kit so you can do it the way you want. Everybody's going to do something a little bit differently. Uh, maybe you don't need this much power and you can get away with two number eights instead of two number sixes or just a single number six. Um, basically design it to fit your specific use cases and your specific needs. Alright, so there we go. Case is reassembled, looks fantastic and is solid as before. And then the last little bit I changed here, since I swapped out the screws on the inside that had previously gone the entire way through the enclosure, um, I just picked up some M8 bolts at Lowe's and threaded those in the top for securing our cable connections to the outside of the battery. Um, so that's about it for this battery. I just wanted to give a slightly different perspective from a DIYer standpoint. I'm very excited to see the changes they make for the version 3 kit. I think they're definitely on the right track making a kit like this that can be easily assembled with cells that are already readily available on the market. So yeah, if you found this interesting, please hit that like button. Any comments or questions, you can leave those as well. I think I pretty much answered everything that was asked originally, um, but there seems to always be something I miss in these. Uh, so otherwise, thanks for watching.